a realm far from our own was a world divided, a world sundered by ages of magic and destruction. In the third age of this realm, two kingdoms vied for control of its future. One such place in the town or city of Red Skull, our heroes Tilton Fowler, known as Flea, and Dasmar Elderstag have begun an adventure. When last we left off, Tilton's father, the terror, gave them a job to clear the starshine bubblery of its rats. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to episode proper episode one of Order and Defiance. Uh, here we are playing Dungeons and Dragons again. Uh, my name is Bo Schwartz. I'll be the dungeon master, and I'm joined by our two uh, impeccable, impeccable, our two wonderful players. That would be Michael Hodgins as Dasmer Elderstag, and Crofton Steers as Tilton Flea Fowler. Welcome everyone to the proper first episode of our little game. Good to be here. Hi guys. I'm very peckable, Bo. You're very peckable? Okay, so I should, I should just call you peckable then. I guess so. <laughs> Hi, right. everyone. Hi. Okay, so I'm glad we were able to finally get together and do this again. It's great to have you both here, and it's great to play. I did a little bit of an intro at the top. I'm not sure if you guys heard it, but to recap where we left off from last week and a little less pretentious of a, of, of a way of manner of speaking, that is, um, a little less storytelling. Um, basically, uh, we opened up with Tilton going to visit his buddy, uh, Archimedes that he calls Archie, uh, not really his buddy, more someone he harasses, uh, a wizard, uh, an older, uh, wizard, one might say in retirement and forgotten, um, that he bothers, uh, to teach him magic tricks to which the, uh, Archie kind of refuses, then manipulates him in a, in, into getting food for him. And then just never really actually ends up teaching him. Uh, so Tilton goes back to the Toad and Whistle, which used to be known as the Crooked Smile, uh, where his family runs the inn, as well as a thieves' guild secretly in that uh, from that location, uh, in Grinner's Row, an impoverished and rundown area of Red Skull, the metropolis of Red Skull. Um, there, his uh, his mother, you know, he, he, he asks for his mother. He tries to steal a loaf of bread. Uh, his father, of course, catches him and uh, tells him to smarten up and gives him a job uh, to go and uh, earn some money for a gold piece and um, or for two gold pieces. He gets one, and da uh, Dasmer and Tilton can split the one, although I'm getting ahead of myself a bit because Dasmer shows up having wandered into town and... Um, uh, goes back to a familiar place, the Toad and Whistle, and uh, Tilton and Dasmer reunite after a decade or more of not seeing one another since they were kids. Dasmer is uh, affable and agrees to help Tilton with his little uh, job of killing rats in the basement of a starshine of the Starshine Bubblery, which is just around the corner from the Toad and Whistle, and is a um business of adult uh, entertainments of uh, men and women of the evening uh, providing entertainments for their clients uh, they meet a minotaur who seems to at least be in charge in the place a minotaur that has no name but that works in the starshine bubblery um, Tilton attempts to make a negotiation out of it but Dasmer kind of messes that up by being quite straightforward and uh, the, the job is for the two gold pieces as agreed upon. 
Uh, they go into the basement and they begin their hunt for rats and they, you know, killed some. Uh, they killed most of the rats they came across. But when we last left them, they found a secret passage into a hidden area of the Starshine Bumblebee basement. And uh, that's where we were when you opened up that trap, uh, Tilton. A giant rat sprung out. So we're immediately back into combat as the rat just jumps straight out at your face. Uh, let's get some initiative rolls, please. Do you guys remember how to roll? Is <laughs> <laughs> it a d20? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's a d20, and add your. you should Plus have an initiative you. score on your character sheets. Yeah. Oh, man. Starts nice. So I rolled the 19 plus, uh, where is it? I've got a 15. You've got a 15. So, you know, I've done so much to prep today, I forgot to get a pen. Where's the It's next to your armor oh, class. right. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I got 22. Sweet. Good, good initiative roll. Do you think I should do a voice? Quite the time to ask. <laughs> We've only been prepping for an hour. You're like, hey, I'm just saying. You, had, some you, perform- had, Can I get some you had five weeks to think about this. <laughs> You're like, is now the best time? All right. Uh, you can, yeah, you should. I think you should have fun. All yeah, right. if it feels, feels right. good. What was your it. initiative roll, Tilton? 22. 22. Uh, is that your voice? <laughs> I've got to, I've got to get all my pens because I don't know which one works. Yeah. It's always a way with pens. Yeah. All right. Oh, that one's completely busted. I'm on pen four now. <laughs> I can't remember the last 22. time I used a pen. Dasmer? Oh, I can actually. Dasmer. Fifteen. Fifteen for Dasmer. Okay. It's not as good as twenty-two. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> my chair is sliding. I need a second. <laughs> All right. He's gotten some RL technical problems. Yeah, and uh, I need to Chair find slide. my giant rat stat sheet, which I don't have open. Chat chat room, I will take advantage of this time to note that the video quality that you're experiencing may not be optimal for me, and that is because I am using the camera on my phone to record this, and I promise that next time, or thereabouts, I will have a much more impressive audio video selection they were all wondering that for sure or you could do that thing they did for the old starlets just smear some vaseline on the lens make you look all <laughs> d- uh, d- what? sorry what was your role dasmer 15 15 okay Why does your solution always involves smearing vaseline on things okay perfect so we are in a combat the right so you'll be first, Tilton. The giant rat will be second, and Dazmer will be third in the turn order. All right, and uh, so away we go, Tilton. Let's uh, see your. Let's okay. See your turn. Do you remember how the turns work? Uh, well, I yeah, I think so. Uh, so first off, I would like it noted that I scream with a very high pitch when the rat jumps out in front of me because I'm in, in the front. I do not expect said rat. I will save your ears from that scream, but just note that I screamed in, in a in a very high, maybe not brave, type of way. Um, and uh, I'm the rat's right in front of me, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to take a, a a shot at the rat with my uh, uh, short sword. Okay. Yeah, remember, so, you can look up what the pr- uh, role that you add to it from from your character sheet. Right. Uh, so it would be, it's p- plus dexterity? So, have, let's, okay, let's look at your character sheet. Man, it's been <laughs> five weeks is a long time, I guess. 41 days. It's, it look, says 41 days. Plus five. So listen, look, go to your character sheet. Look at your yeah. actions. You've got short sword, right? You're making a melee yes. attack. You get plus five to it. Do you know how it figures out that you get plus five? Because it's a plus five dex modifier? Or? Nope. So if you look at your dexterity, it's 16, which gives you a plus three modifier. Where's okay. the remaining plus two come from? 
Uh, like I'm in high school. Yeah, well, you can study this before we start the show, or you can learn and be embarrassed on the show by the DM. <laughs> your, profici- your proficiency bonus? Yep, you nailed it. You are proficient with certain weapons, one of them being a short sword, so you get plus five to your roll. It's pl- your dex. Because it's, it's a finesse weapon. Not all weapons you can add your dex. It has to be a finesse weapon like a dagger or a short sword. So okay. you add your dex plus three, and you add your proficiency plus two. This is a learn. This is an educational show as much as it is anything else. So um, I rolled a nineteen again. So uh, nineteen plus so twenty four. Okay, perfect. Uh, just as a side note, you'll see I have updated your tokens <laughs> yeah, so I that they this. look like what they're supposed to look like. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> so yeah. Excellent. So you rolled a 19. So that means uh, you hit the giant rat yes! with a short sword. Uh, I screeched and then hit. Mm hmm. Uh, so now you need to roll damage, correct? Okay. Yes, roll yeah. damage. Let's roll some okay. damage. So for a short sword, what's, the, what's my damage roll? Where does it. It'll say, like, next to it, it'll be like 1d6 plus something. I don't think I think I'm in the wrong thing. So I'm in are, just a sh- straight up character sheet. Yeah, yeah, but should be on uh, bottom you, make right. Make sure you have action Actions. selection, and then it's like attack. I'm gonna put this. Full Although screen. you don't need your character sheet per se if you know what the damage is, but let's use okay. your character sheet. So bottom right, when you have a tab, this is actions, inventory, features, description, notes, extra, right? Okay. Yeah, so under actions, you've got all checked, probably. So, yeah, so click attack. Right, yeah, so I attack, got it. Yeah, so you see your short sword has five feet of reach. Yeah, uh, 1d6 plus, plus three. There you go. Do you know why you have one, a plus three? to The The 1d6 is the short sword damage. Why are the plus three? The de- It's the dex? Yep, you add your dex modifier to the damage. Okay, okay, okay. All right, great. I got it. I'm, I'm, I'm catching up. I'm catching up. All right. Uh, so one d six. Where's my d six? That's the one I know from all. Oh, so I roll five. That's pretty good. One d six plus three, so eight. All right, you bring your short sword down onto the giant rat, slicing into it. It squirms and and recoils from the blade, but is still running towards you with even more fervor in the seconds that this takes. Right, like you chop him, but you don't kill him outright. All right. And do, I don't have, like, do I have a bonus action? Uh, if you have a feature which uses a bonus action, you can use it. Okay. I'm trying to think. If, all right. Yeah, every turn is a move, action, and bonus action so long as you have a feature which uses it. For example, you don't have sneak attack yet because you're level one, but sneak attack blo- uses bonus action. And he's blocking the exit, right? Um, to, to... He's like uh, orders of magnitude uh, smaller than you, so you could uh, step <laughs> over him. A difficult terrain, however. And okay. attacks of opportunity still apply if you move outside of his range. Okay, I'm just going to call it there. I'll take my one shot, and that's it. All right, uh, so you slice him, and he's bleeding profusely, but that doesn't stop him in his feral state from going ahead and biting you. Damn sneeze. All right. Sorry, I didn't mute. Uh, okay. And that is a 20, not natural, uh, which is a hit on your AC. Is that, what's your AC? Oh, I'm sure it is. A 13. Okay, perfect. So let me get my dice here for the damage <laughs> roll. And the rat comes at you, biting your shins yet again for four points of damage. Ah! Ah! Yeah, exactly. ah! It's painful. All right. Four points of damage. Yeah. So uh, I'm just – you can keep going. I'm adding the, the damage. Okay. To so, my... yeah, just make sure – just type it into the box and replace it so that it's now – you know what it should be so yeah yeah. okay seven hit points remaining and uh for you um okay and the the rat uh, attacks you and he just stays in in feral mode now from okay okay now dasmer you're next in the turn order um after hearing him screech i will say foul vermin 
And then I'm going to cast Infestation on it. This is only what you deserve. So I'll roll that. I guess it's D20 to see if I hit. Is that right? For the, All right. For so the... I'm, I'm not familiar with it. Okay. At will. So, Let me, so it's an at-will yeah. 1D6 damage, but it's D20 to hit, right? That's right. Well, yeah, not, he gets a, not, not necessarily, but as an he attack has a roll. Saving attack or saving is constitution. No, nope. you caught so reading it. So the it, it says you cause a cloud of mites, fleas, and other parasites to appear momentarily on one creature. The target must succeed on a constitution saving throw. So there's no attack roll on this. Okay, he just it just happens. So the okay. creature has to roll a saving throw. Okay, so I, uh, a I constitution send the fleas saving throw. Him. What is your uh, what is this your save DC? Save it's up DC. top, so your modifier is plus three, spell attack is plus five, and I see it's 13. So the rat has to roll a 13 or higher to save, basically. Okay, yeah, yeah, save. Okay, I see that now. Uh, with the constitution modifier added. And it is a failure. The effect takes place. Yes! So you infest yeah. this. Uh, and then takes, he yeah. moves five feet in a random random direction first it takes 1d6 poison damage okay right? and 1D6. moves five feet in a random direction because he's trying All to get right, the fleas off of him okay let's do the d6 so roll your d6 of damage two um oh, all like... right so <laughs> so describe how like your infestation magic works does it just like a, a, a I cause a cloud of vermin and i reach out my hand and then this cloud of fleas seems to materialize right on top of the rat yeah. and just just like covers them like just little jumping fleas all over this creature okay so um very good now we're gonna do a little more D D quiz time uh <laughs> so one of the things that's required for this spell that we didn't the component talk about it is that it's a it has a verbal component so you got to say some words you don't know you, ha you don't have to but it's you are speaking dazimer is speaking you have a somatic component so that means your hands have to oh, yeah, okay. wave. I think I covered most of those. And I said foul vermin. It, has, only what, yeah. it also has a material component. Mm. It requires a living flea. Um, now, if you have a focus, um, then you don't need it. A magical focus. Now, I don't... Do you have a magical focus? I thought we did. I had a dried mushroom, which is my magical, uh, or a mushroom totem or something. Yeah, like you that. got a, yeah, you have a totem, which a totem can kind of be anything. It doesn't have to be like an actual totem pole or what you're thinking. Yeah, like, yeah, like a, my little... So you have like a dried mushroom? Yeah, or maybe it's a wood carving of a mushroom. Okay. I can't the, remember what The reason I ask, it's important to know what you have equipped in your hand. You normally have your quarter staff, so you have to be holding... Okay, so yeah, every time I cast a spell, focus. I have to unequip my quarter staff and equip a not, focus not every time only when it requires a material component hmm. that doesn't cost gold okay so i'll get we'll doesn't just don't worry gold. about the gold part later basically if it specifies a gold cost you can't use this hack um but let's just don't just ignore that for now basically when a spell requires a material you need to have a living flea in on on you to cast it but if, mean, you, if you don't, you can use the totem in its stead. So to cast a spell, it basically means you can one-hand your quarterstaff. It's a free action. I let people equip as a free action. So you whip out your you whip out your mushroom. But now you have a mushroom and a staff in your hand. You can't two-hand your quarterstaff anymore. Okay? Um, but, well, I but, mean, it's the other oh. We didn't talk about, like, I've just been living in the forest for 10 years. Maybe I'm infested with fleas as well. Hey, I am a living flea. That's my name. You need an actual flea, not a human. Flea. Yeah, but I mean, but good one. Yeah, it's true. It's not. It's, it's nothing that I that I thought about. But being that I have been living rough for years, I mean, can I'm it be just... presumed that my that my cloak has fleas on it, and I pick one off and, and... oh, you have fleas on you. I would uh, assume so. If I this is important slept... for role playing, it may affect your like charisma rolls and stuff. Hey, people if say. you stayed I mean, at my I mean, parents' inn, you probably do. <laughs> I sort of assume that my I'm you know I'm at kind of one with nature. There's creatures and creepy crawlies around me. I'm comfortable with that. We'll say there's fleas in my traveling cloak because I was okay. Before. But you can use your totem as you don't have to have fleas. Like don't <laughs> the whole 
unequipping i mean okay i didn't i guess i don't know how this it's fine i'm still gonna let you use it i'm just trying to provide you with okay, some so education on what your status is if you're gonna cast something with a material cost you don't have fleas on you i'm just gonna rule as a dm okay, you didn't fine. mention it ahead of time you don't have yeah fleas. i didn't i didn't know so I you have to use your totem and it's totally fine you pulled out your to you, you're, well, you're one handing your, your quarter staff one handing my staff yeah and you pull out your totem and cast a spell and you Kill the creature with the spells. Do you want to describe how it dies to your fleas? Oh, he oh and only two good. damage, right? Well, <laughs> yeah, because I did all the work. Well, you know, it was still alive. Uh, <laughs> the little cloud of fleas just like bites its eyes and causes blood to come out of its eyes and it just falls dead. <laughs> okay. Well done. All right. The rat falls dead. And in that moment, as the rat falls dead, um, you notice sort of behind like the torchlight that uh, Tilton has uh, shines towards the back of the room. And you see kind of like a mound of like fecal matter in one back corner. And another rat zooms out from, from the pile of fecal matter. It was in the fecal matter. He, Nasty. Yeah. Hang on. Why is he? Oh, hang on. There he appears. He zooms out one, two, three, four. All right. I'm just going to get rid of this guy since you killed that That's rat. That's one shitty rat. <clears throat> And it runs wow. straight for Tilton Flea Fowler and attacks immediately. Tilton Flea Fowler. Yeah. Blocking the door. Tank uh, extraordinaire. <laughs> so that is a hit, and I'm going to roll damage. Uh, for four, another four points of damage as a second giant rat shoots out of a pile of feasties in the corner and uh, uh, bites, your, bites your ankles. Like incredibly hard like just chopping right down on your ankles so i'm down to three health so i'm almost dead like one more of those will take me out oh also contextually i screeched again very loudly okay yeah <laughs> i'm sure the minotaur appreciates your earning your gold piece your two gold pieces um all right perfect tilton you're up now okay <laughs> i'm just like my ankles are bleeding and i'm like I'm like but <laughs> My tyrant's cock that hurts. Ah! <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. I like that expression. Tyrant's cock. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add that to my diction, my lexicon. My tyrant's cock that hurts so much. Oh! And then I, I um, do a, another attack with my short sword. This time at the shit rat. Okay. Then do do your attack move. All right, so I'm going to roll my d20. 15. Oh. So uh, 15 plus, we said 5, uh, so 20. Non All right, uh, roll your damage dice, buddy. All right, roll. Tilton, nice. rolling damage. Big money. Ooh, five, 5 again. Five. No, but that's what I rolled last time, and it didn't kill him, so it's not oh. going to kill this one either. That, no, that's not your total. 5 plus... Uh, yeah, five plus, uh, what was it? Oh, God. Hang on. It's three. I'm pretty sure it's three, but I got to go back to Yeah, my... it's three. It's 1d6 plus three for you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so that's so, eight. It's eight. These guys have like 10 health. Stupid uh, rats. So you kill this rat. Describe how you what? slaughter the rat. Oh, okay. Don't be so negative, so, man. You're pretty good with the sword. You kill them. So my sword slams down. Cutting the rat in the the shit rat into two, equally disgustingly severed sides, and as much as he is clearly dead, I continue to swing my sword over and over repeatedly on the shit rat, yell, yell, yelling, "Die rat, die, die rat!" Okay, because you keep hitting it, it eventually gets stuck into your blade. And you whip the corpse up into the air. It splits in two and splashes uh, copious amounts of its blood and viscera on you, uh, unless you choose to try and dodge. Uh, oh, I do try to dodge frantically. All right. Like, ah, gross, let's, you know? Let's make a, an acrobatics check, please. Okay. Uh, what do I roll for this? <laughs> Plus five bonus. Uh, okay. Is acrobatics still a tw do I still do a twenty for these checks? Yeah, yeah. it's a D twenty plus five plus your acrobatics modifier. Eight plus five, so thirteen. Okay. You managed to sidestep the worst of it as the Oof. 
as one piece goes flying Darcy. to the left and the other piece goes flying past you and towards Des, where Des, where a, a, the bottom half of a rat corpse is flying your way and is going to hit you square in the face unless you make an acrobatics check to I'll, dodge it. I will make an acrobatics check. Hold on, what is my acrobatics? Plus two? Okay. Rolls a d20, yeah? Yeah. All right. Where? Come on, Come on one. <laughs> oh, it could happen. Uh, ten. ten. Well, all right. Uh, so you're able Two. to fairly nimbly. You see it coming. It's pretty telegraphed. Uh, you you dodge your head to the side and it hits the wall behind you and falls to the ground. Sorry, right. Das. Um, if the uh, I'd like to walk up, close the space because he's taking how much damage have you taken? You're taking quite a bit of damage. I, I have three health of eleven left. All right. Well, then I will walk up behind you and put my hand on your back because you've just been going nuts acting yeah. this rat. And I'll say, calm, my friend, I am here. And I cast Cure Wounds on you. Uh, so it's one D, a D, one D8 plus three. Yeah, uh, you, I assume that... You got to touch him. Yeah, he that's did. why I walked up behind him. I put my hand on my back and I said, calm, calm, my friend, I am here. Excellent. So, D8. Yeah. 1D8 plus your spellcasting ability modifier, which is 3. Yeah, is and you, three. you you roll it. 7 oh, plus 3. It's so. 10. Oh! You did it! You brought me back to full health. All right. Now, make sure you have two spell slots. You see that I on your just, character sheet? I, I click cast. One is one is out now, so I use this. Perfect. Spell. You got it. And you, we you, did it! I did it, Bo! I did it! All that Baldur's Gate 3 <laughs> wizarding is <laughs> paid off. Here. Oh my god, worst wizard ever. All right, and you don't need a totem for that. That's only verbal and somatic. You gotta touch and say some nice words, which okay. you did. Yeah. All right, uh -huh. beautiful. Uh, so, Tilton, uh -huh. uh, the wounds on your legs close up uh, as, as Desmer touches them with a, a magical glow. Uh, Restitches the flesh that was recently opened. But the mental scars will live forever. All right, so before you, as you sort of raise up your torch, you look uh, in, into this room here and you see uh, kind of a strange wooden device with chains on it. Looks like a stretcher, but I'm not sure if your characters are familiar with torture devices, so, you know, looks like a big wooden bed. Uh, atop it, there appears to be a coffin closed, and towards the back, there's this big X-shaped thing made out of wood, also with cuffs on it as well. Um, there's a milk urn in the left part of the room. You see some sconces on the walls that are not lit. There's a little cage in the left corner, a strange carpet, but mostly it's bare brick secret room below this starshine bubblery. Perhaps something special for some clients, perhaps an extra storage room. Hard to say. Huh? Smells like shit in here. Yes, and there's the big pile of feces uh, staring uh, in the back of the room, looking straight ahead at you. It is unclear to me how you people can dwell in such places. It is a putrid order in here. <laughs> Look, even by Grinner's Row standards, this place is a dive. What, what, what do you think these devices could be used for? Honestly, Das, I don't even want to think about it too much. Is there any other rats in here? I can't tell. You're blocking the doorway, um, and I can't see much past you. Perhaps uh, you should step inside. Tell you what, you go first. Uh... So I, <laughs> I step, I step in and let you go through. We're not in combat anymore, are we? No, you're no longer in combat. You're no, we're now in, like exploration free mode. Yeah. So so uh, so I, I just sort of let you squeeze by and go first. All right, move your, like, token guy on the foundry thing. Because it casts light and stuff, right? Isn't that the deal? Mm-hmm. It does provide illumination. Oh, yeah. I guess I'm holding the torch. Okay, I'm coming. I walk over to the chamber with a with the, the coffin on it. And as I smell, I sort of sniff the air. And I was like, it smells not just like feces. There is some other odors in here. The odors... I wonder if they could be the odors of death. Look at the golf. Do you want? Do you want to make a nature? Uh, yeah, nature roll. Make a nature to roll. See if you learn anything from your sniffing. 
Sniffing. See how many types of feces you smell in here. Yeah. All right. Let me do a nature. Okay. Let's see. Oh, an eight. That's not. What's my nature? Let me see. Boo. Nature's plus three. Eight plus three. It's not like super great. Uh. Eleven. Mm. Well, you sniff the air and uh, the scent of the giant pile of rat feces in the corner is just overpowering. Um. You. Do you catch the whiff of death in the room? Very, now, very subtly under current. And that isn't the rats you just slaughtered. They smell a fresh corpse. You smell a, a desiccation. Like You have a familiarity with sort of decay, given that you spend time with mushrooms. And mushroom, you know, mushroom things tend to decay and grow on dead things. Rot. And you, so, there's a there's a, a a sense you have a sense that something like that is present in the room. Um, I'd like to, uh, I like using now that I've sort of calmed down from seeing my ankles stitched back together and gotten over my absolute rage at the rats. Uh, I I sort of take in the room wholly for the first time and use my my knowledge of sort of <clears throat> Grinner's row in general to kind of investigate and see if I see something that's notable or unusual beyond what we first saw when we uh, you, you described You'd it. like to just investigate the room visually or do you want to start looking for clues of something? Uh, um, I, I'm really just investigating, at this point I'm just investigating visually, I'm just taking another, I'm taking another like really good look at it based on my personal knowledge. Of yeah, I'm just asking because it's the difference between perception and yeah. investigate, so if you're looking for something specific, maybe we do investigation or you're physically yeah. doing, if you're just looking at the environment for something out of place, it's going to be perception. Yeah. Okay. So which do you so, want? Perception. Okay. So I will... Uh, do my my dice here mm -hmm. and it is a nine plus five so 14 all right you scan around the room looking for something that might seem out of place or might trigger an idea or a notion you don't know what so you carefully look around the room while dasmar continues to <laughs> smell smell the, smell the shitty room uh, you, your attention is drawn to the mound of feces. Hmm. Uh, you think, uh, as you move the torchlight around, you see you see a glint. Something flashes briefly oh, as you move no. the torchlight around. There's a glint uh, that came from the pile of shit, and you move the torch around a little bit more <laughs> to see if you can find it again. And then you do as you like go this left and right with the torch. You do you are able to repeat the glint. Something is glinting inside the mound of shit. So, uh, Das, I got some good news and some bad news. The good news is I think I might have found something. The bad news is I think it's in this pile of shit. Uh, so you like nature, right? Huh. I just look at him. <laughs> uh, I think this is as good a time any to commune with nature right here in Grinner's Row. Do you mind, like, squirreling around in there and trying to get that glint? Like, check out what that is. You see that right there? Um, I look over at the pile of shit. I've been distracted by my slight sense of the odor of death, and I've been distracted. Uh, I look at the pile of shit and say, hmm... Well, feces is not entirely to be uh, feared. New growth can come of such a thing. I walk right. over a little bit closer. It's fertilizer. And then uh, I'm going to um, use my druid craft as a spell to try to see if I can get some mu mushrooms, see if there's any spores of mushrooms in it to uh, uh, get a little mushroom bloom going in the feces because that would be the kind of thing that might okay. grow there. So you're going to – sorry, you're going to – is this a spell or? So it's druid craft, which is a spell. Yeah, it says, okay. um, "Let me let me tell you that you instantly make a flower blossom, a seed pod open, or a leaf bud bloom." But I would think mushroom spores would be would fall within that kind of thing. So I'm gonna now it could be that there's none in that particular pile of feces. So that's for you to decide. But that's okay. what I'm gonna attempt to do. See if I can make something a mushroom bloom 
Because a flower is not going to grow underground, but mushrooms would like to be underground where we are. So. Okay, so you're going to attempt to push forward mushrooms from the pile from of the shit. pile of shit. Yeah. Okay, and this is there's no roll or check for this. You can just instantly do it. And um, yeah, I mean, yeah, how do we? I, you know, I feel I, like I, mushrooms I, grow in shit. I mean, uh, as you cast the magic, sort of a thick, like kind of green um, patch grows on top of the shit, like. Kind of like moss, but it's like, you know, uh, mush, mushroomy in nature, but it's like a mossy uh, film grows on oh, it. Like a mold? Like a mold. Yeah, like a mold, and it begins to turn white and then sort of creates this patch, and from it, small little mushrooms begin to just sprout out of the shit. And then I say, aha, you see, <laughs> life, it is everywhere, even in the filth of excrement. Did did you did you get the gold thing? <laughs> any ch- any chance that the uh, mushrooms pushed out the uh, <laughs> the gleaming? Right no, there? it's on top of the you know it's on top of the shit, not inside the shit. So you okay, didn't, well, we'll didn't, say didn't I, really I, push I, anything out. I walk over to take a very close look at the mushrooms. Admire, I admire their beauty. I kind of crouch down. I look at them, mm-hmm. like so amazed that they just sprouted out of this disgusting shit. And then I see the thing, and I will reach out my hand and pick it up. Okay. The shining thing. Oh, the shining thing. Well, well, you said it's t- on top of the shit. T- well, know. no, Tilton was able to see something shiny as he like was moving his yeah, but torch he told around. Me about it, right? Yeah, he told, he told you me. about it, but um, it's in the shit. Like you'd have to. Okay, s- so I can't see it unless you oh, got do, like well, do, a do I know where something. it is? Like I guys, tell me. Do I know where it is? He's told me it's there. I've gone over and made mushrooms grow. Maybe, maybe you get advantage looking for it or something. All I right. Told so, you. so yeah. Well, as I look around at it, um, I don't know. I'm just trying to determine like if I can see it, I'll try to. So take you, it. you kneel closer and inspect, and with. Tilton's guidance, you do find a location where you see just poking through the tiniest of holes something gray, silver, metal looking. It's under those annoying mushrooms. <laughs> okay, and then and then I kind of chuckle and I just say, There's no need to fear such things, my friend. And I reach my hand in the pile of shit and pull out the thing or, or, or go to touch it I'm waiting for you to tell me i get all right by so uh, you re- you you reach out to touch to touch the metal thing you put your hand and it's well the scent is quite pungent as you break the seal of this top of the shit pile and it's it's mushy and you reach in and you, you gently put your hand around it you feel there's a a, a hard side like there's a large flat surface unmistakable feeling of a blade essentially hmm. is one side is sharp and one side is back tugging on it in this way may cut your fingers so you hmm. probably have to like give it like a pinch to pull yeah um, but you've identified it as some sort of a blade um, then you have your hand on it okay and i just say it appears to be a blade of some kind uh <laughs> i'm like so it's I'm not like, gold does not appear to be and huh. so i well like i get my hand around the like i don't want to i'm not gonna grab a blade with my hand but yeah like i pinch it with my thumb and forefinger on the flat das, to see if i can remove it that's you know what i was thinking about this room it seems kind of weird but the more i think about it the more i think some of this shit might be minotaur shit <laughs> Uh, there is a rather large quantity of it for just rats. <laughs> so, anyways, I lift up this thing and kind of like give it a little, like I'm holding it thumb and forefinger on this yeah. blade. Again, you have to tell me, is this as big? Is it a sword or is it like it a small? It feels line? more like a sword, a heftier. Okay. It's actually quite heavy as you pull. It resists uh, somewhat. Okay. Um, but as, as you start pulling, as soon as you tug and provide some force, a hand shoots out from the pile of shit and grabs your forearm and then a head bursts from the top of the pile of shit with long black hair and a face covered in shit with eyes like big black circles, a sickly, sickly looking face, grabs your hand and says, Name thyself. Who are you? I shriek again. 
<laughs> and then I say, uh, I am Dasmer Elderstag. And he grips your hand even harder and pulls his face into yours and says, Are you friend or foe? And then... <laughs> Tell me, are then, you friend I, or foe? I am friend to all, I say. His eyes dart around looking between uh, you and Tilton in the back as it attempts to come into focus. The blade... The blade like gets removed from your hand, and his other hand comes out and brings out the blade and draws it to your neck. And he says, "Who do you work for?" I do not work for anyone. I am only accompanying my friend here, Flea, to rid this dungeon of vermin. I and I I start very uh, defensive, but then get more confident as I'm talking, and I start by saying, "Ah." Uh, we just work for the Minotaur upstairs. We're trying to kill rats. You know, just clean up the basement. You know what? My dad is the Terror Fowler. I bet you've heard of him. He's a pretty tough dude. I wouldn't be messing with us. We're just doing our work here. All right. Uh, persuasion roll, please, from the both of you. Team persuasion. Team persuasion. All right. So I will r roll mine. Oh, I rolled a 19 and my persuasion is plus six. So uh, 25. Come on, Dasmer. Dasmer. I, what do I have to roll the same yeah. thing? Persuasion yeah, we're roll. rolling. It's, it's a team a, persuasion a, a, roll. A team persuasion roll on this well, guy. Okay. Well, I mean, I was. Oh, I feel like I was trying to convince him I was his friend. It's a bit of a different. Uh... All right. Oh, natural one. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he just probably doesn't think I'm his. All right. So he pushes he pushes the blade harder into your neck. You can feel it begin to cut. And he grabs your arm and he steps out. I will have no lies. You will tell me at once. Where am I? And... um. As he steps out, you get a better look at the blade. The blade is innately jeweled. It The hilt mm. has several um, crystals of different color, a large crystal on the uh, towards the pommel um, in, in this beautiful decorative design, as well as the hilt, like the shield between the blade and the hilt, um, has innumerable blades, uh, all in various shades of black and red. Very, very uh, decorative on the hilt and he begins standing up he's still got your forearm with one hand dasmer and he's got a blade pressed to your neck and he stands up out of the pile of shit covered in it positively reeking his eyes sunken but his body you can tell shaking somewhat um he doesn't look very healthy um he says he... I, I will have the truth now do we have a sense of what race he is uh, he's a human. Uh, well, okay. uh, and then I just I say again, as I told you, I am friend to all, um, and you are in the basement of an, a building in what? What is this place called again? <laughs> the Starshine Bubblery. The star. You're in the Starshine Bubblery in the basement, and you do not look well. Um, you're maybe in, I'm gonna. Maybe, you're in a pile uh, of shit. I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna cast cure wounds on him since I'm touching him. Oh. Um, you need verbal and somatic. Your hands are being like restrained. Your one your hands. Well, it's because he needs touch, right? I'm not touching. Yeah, but it's you don't just yeah. touch that way. Okay, you're being, well, you're being I, held. Okay, then, then, then I'll just say to him, I'm like, you do not look well. I can aid you. I can give you. I can help cure your wounds, my friend. Look, buddy, we're just here to kill rats. Let go, of my friend. What are your names? As I've told you, I'm Dasmer Elderstag. And I am son of T the Terry, the Terror Fowler. I'm his favorite son, Flea Fowler. He, he looks between both of you for a moment, taking it in. Who else knows you're here? Everyone. The whole town. They all know we're here. Huh. 
then I I say, well, I I believe the only ones who really know we're here are the proprietor of this establishment upstairs, and uh, my friend Flea's father. Other than that, I don't believe anybody knows we're here. <laughs> and he's a really big deal. Okay. Um. And with that, you notice his body, like, uh, he's, he's holding his body taut, trying to um, assail you, but then his legs give out, and he drops uh, holding your hand, Dasmer, and he leans over the, the wooden rack uh, where he where he, like, bends, he just sort of bends over and tries to catch himself. He's still sort of clutching onto the sword and waving it in your direction, but he looks clearly uh, worse. I'm just going to say bye-bye, mommy. Have a good evening. All right. Um, he looks, he looks, uh, clearly like, you know, sickly and he begins uh, gagging. <laughs> he can't really talk as he's like gagging it. <laughs> so has he released my, as he fell on this thing, do you release my, this, my yes. wrist? He's released, yeah, he's released your wrist and he's like leaning over the wooden table, the rack, like the torture table. Um, He's still holding a sword at you, but like he can barely hold himself on his legs, no. and like the sort of whatever, whatever's going on with him is, is taken over his ability to be strong. And and, and okay. now, so then I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say yet again, let me help you, my friend, and I'm gonna try to move forward so that I can touch his back, and, and while, if he doesn't resist, cast cure wounds on him. And well, well. At the same time, simultaneously, I'm going to hold out my crossbow and just, you know, aim like I'm sort of further away from them, aim aim it at him, and, and say, and don't make any funny moves. Yeah, and and like, I look, okay, like a feral creature, he's just stands stock still while the world around him happens, realizing he may be helpless in this situation. Um, he lets you approach Dasmer and cast your cure wounds upon him. All right, so I burn my other spell slot, and I'm gonna do what is it? A D8, one D8, D8, and roll. Oh, one plus three, so I do four. Okay, you better he- him than me. You heal him for four points, and um, the wounds upon his body. Uh, some of them, you see, you notice there are scratches upon his body. That stuff uh, seems to stitch up. However, the sickly pallor that he has um, doesn't go away. He's still weak and, and still uh, exhausted. You don't know how long he's been lying in there, what he's been afflicted with, but he seems sick um, and not just wounded. So the, the wounds upon his body close up, his weakness remains, and even as you cure him, that finally forces his uh, stomach to throw up and he barfs all over <laughs> the, 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 the torture rack and the coffin oh, that's upon him. And das, it... let's get out of here. While he's, while he's busy, we got to get out of here. Let's go get our money and. No, go, no, get... wait, wait. You, you're not, you are not here to finish the job. Well, it depends. If by the job you mean killing rats, then yes, and we did. And now we want our gold. We we came in here to kill rats, but surely something else must have guided us here so that we could help you. If you are not here to kill me, then you then you must help me. I we will. We will. What? <laughs> and I turn to flee. I say, "Flee this man. Look at him." Something terrible has befallen him. We must help. You mean the man that about two seconds ago had a blade to your neck? A very jeweled blade, I might add. I I roll my eyes and say, we found this man buried in a pile of feces. (laughs) (laughs) What would you expect him to do when when a strange hand grasps his? He has clearly been mistreated, and we do not know the reason. But no one deserves to be treated this way. All right, let's just help him outside, and we'll get our gold. No, and no, not outside. I can't be seen. But you want to go back in the pile of shit? <sighs> he doesn't like that comment very much, but has no energy to respond. He looks and he says, "Those who put me here wanted me found." 
and they wanted your heads to hang for it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did, what did, why do they want to kill you? Or why do they want us to die and... I just you said you said I was at we were you said we were at the Starshine bubble. What 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 um division of Red Skull am I in? I sort of shrug my shoulders and look at Flea. Critters Row Oh fuck. I know, we get that a lot. <laughs> Listen, whoever put me here, you were the the fools meant to find me. And your heads will hang when the Inquisitory finds out what's happening here. Do you not (coughs) know who I am? I pat him on the back. (laughs) He pukes again. Uh, I, I am really sorry, sir. I think there has been some sort of misunderstanding. We, uh, we don't know who you are. Uh, we wish you well. Look, um, if you fools value your lives, you must get me out of here and no one must know. Hmm. I, I have allies and they will... They will... <coughs> this is your only way of survival. Trust... Just trust me. With, you need to get me out of here and I can't be seen. I look at Flea and I say, Flea... Look around this room. There must be another way out of here. Wait, 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 wait. I, I gesture for da- Dasmer to come aside, like, so that we can chat, like, one-on-one. I just, I look at you and kind of shake my head because I don't understand the sort of, like, city. <laughs> I do more exaggerated hand gestures, like, come here. Okay, um, so then when he does that e- exaggerated hand gesture, I'll take the guy's arm and kind of like put it around my shoulder and heave him up (laughs) and then to help him walk and then we walk together over towards you i'm like have you found a way out (laughs) uh (laughs) okay uh excuse me sir you seem very nice uh i like the fact that you didn't kill my friend uh I'm just noticing now that you ha- seem to have quite a bedazzling weapon. And I would say that if we were to, <laughs> if we were to put ourselves at risk to help you escape from whatever serious troubles you clearly are in, well, it would probably behoove us to receive some sort of, I don't know, reward, maybe that sword. <laughs> Then I, before he has a chance to answer, I say, Flee! The reward of saving someone's life is the joy that you know you've done something good in the world. And I look at the guy and kind of like shake my head. (laughs) (laughs) Dasser, don't don't quit your day job here. Uh, we, We have an opportunity to help this nice man, but also help ourselves a little bit uh i i think you know we're taking substantial risk here buddy um the the the, the man raven haired uh, covered in shit nods his head he seems to understand the, the business at foot and he says i understand rat catchers must eat too there will be gold for you once you deliver me to my friends but <laughs> i you must find me a safe house. We must get out of here, and then you can find me a, a safe house to rest while I figure out what happened. <clears throat> and we will. Um, I will get you uh, all the gold you could want. So uh, far, be it for me to look uh, look a, a, a gift horse or a gift minotaur in the mouth, but I'm just curious. Who did you say you were again? You seem to think we would recognize you, and now you have access to all this gold. Obviously, enemies that might be somewhat dangerous. Before we sign on the dotted line, it would be really good to know what's the deal. On second thought, if you truly have no clue who I am, it might be safer for you if you don't. Okay, well... (laughs) 
Nice well, meeting you. <laughs> I just, uh, oh, I require your help. I just mean, I'm. Okay, so I do you I have not, not know who I am. If you don't, <laughs> it's better if you don't. And just help me, and I, I, look I will at, speak I look none of this. this. Um, I oh yeah, well, when I ask him, I say, sir, sir our, my my new friend, what is your name? Because I do not know who you are. I have lived in the wildlands for these past twenty years, almost, and I am not very familiar with this town. So he looks very reluctant to tell you, but. Only so that I have may have something to call you by. The fucking prince of this cursed city. Mm. I've never met a prince before. I'm Gasgar von Brazen. Gasgar von Brazen. Do you not recognize the sword? Hey, so uh, just step in aside, Bo. Would would we know? Would I know? Like my character, would we be aware of this person? <laughs> Why don't you, you do? Why don't you do a, a history check? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's see if your memory, uh, if, if you've learned I'll anything. Say, I about... definitely wouldn't, but you should. If he's I mean, I I feel like he's the Taylor Swift of this place that everybody would know. But all right, I'm going to uh, I'm going to roll. See if it means anything. You would do one too, Mike. I guess. No, nope. because it's I you. haven't been in. Like I've he's saying, I have no idea who that is, so he doesn't need to check. Okay. Uh, fourteen plus two, sixteen. All right. So you <laughs> you search your memory, uh, to to for this. It comes quickly. It's this isn't this isn't hidden information. The aristocracy of Red Skull. Um, certainly, the nobility of Red Skull do not frequent openly. Uh, the city of Red Skull. They usually remain in the castle, doing things that nobles do, and being the subject of legend to those in the city. However. On odd occasion, there have been parades in celebration of victories or sel- uh, matters of self-importance to the rulership, and you have childhood memories of seeing nobility with. Um, they call you. You have this derisive term for the knights and nobility of um, of Red Skull, like calling them red cans because they wear like crazy red steel armor. And certainly the nobility amongst the tyranny wear this armor and have bejeweled swords that are, you know, look incredible to the common folk. You couldn't place his face, but the raven-haired uh, king, ty- or, sorry, tyrant lord of Red Skull, Red Skull Lord Bashmagar von Brazen, is someone that you know. And the son of Bashmagar, he has several... Um, you can place, you've definitely heard of Gasgar, the youngest of the princes of Red Skull. Whether this person is him, you know, you couldn't identify him in a lineup, but certainly with the sword and the raven-haired look, he matches the description and some of your memories of parades as a youth. Holy shit. No offense. Uh, Dash, I think this guy's a big deal. A real big deal. Oh, good. <laughs> and then, but as he says this, I'm just looking around uh, to see if there's another way. Out, knowing the way we came in, um, can I do like a an investigation check to see if I can find if there's another way out of this room while we're in here? Uh, yeah, you can. And um, uh, Prince Gasgar motions that you can lean him up against the wall so you can freely do that, and not have to take him everywhere. Okay, so I kind of like help him over to the wall so that he can lean against it. Mm-hmm. And then I, uh, let me roll my d20 here. Uh, d20? Yeah, roll. Uh, three. Ten plus, I think it's just three, uh, investigation. Oh, only one. Eleven. Okay, so you have a, you have a look around the room, and um, this place is like a solid, this is like some sort of secret, like fuck room. Like, like there's no <laughs> way out of here except the one door uh, that's there. This clearly, like, there's clearly nothing in here. No peep, no like um, ways out. You do discover that there is a, a small little narrow hole leading, like, from the north side, like around. I don't know if I can ping it or not, but uh, I'm gonna put the guy there. Around here, there's like a there's a small little hole in the wall, like a very very small hole uh in the wall but small hole. 
Okay. Well, then I will. I'll go up to the small hole and kind of hold my hand in front of it, mm. see if there's any air coming out or the scent. I sniff um, the air to see if some smell. There Would that is. Be nature. Uh, sure. Yeah, you can sniff. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's a nature check. I don't know what that yeah, is. Um, I wouldn't say it's a nature thing. I think perception yeah. is what we're looking for here. Perception. Okay. Oh, okay. Good. Good perception. All right. So roll. Do I roll again for that then? Mm-hmm. Or D one. All right. Let me see. Need a better roll. Thirteen. I got plus five for perception. So eighteen. Okay. Right. So sniff you, the air. Feel it. Yeah. You sniff the air. You look around. I mean, in that corner of the room where that hole is, it's at eye level height. Okay. And when you you, you sort of peer in and try and we well, have a bit of dark vision too, so you can see into the room. It's a closet and there's a door. Hmm. And um, you have a sense that this is a way to look between rooms. Oh, hmm. I don't know if your character would know it. Your character is a little yeah. innocent, but uh, generally, I'll just, a, I'll, as I look through, I'll just say, like a people. It seems as though someone could stand on the other side of this room and look in on it. <laughs> um, so I, I I walk over and. And, and, and check it out uh, based on 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 Das pointing it out. Um, oh, I, I I know what this is. Uh, I said there might actually be a way in there somehow. Let, look, t- let's take a look around the wall and see if we can find any sort of switch or something that would open it up. Because I think it might be a shortcut out of here. Well, well, I've already done my investigation check and didn't do too well. So, so, uh, so I'll I'll do one. I guess. I assume we can't mm-hmm. just spam them a hundred times. So we find no, here. no. If I tell you, yeah, there's I've done. Yeah. yeah, I've done mine, and well, I don't know. So, but I'm I'm looking for something specific. Yeah. So investigation roll, please. You're looking for a switch, a secret lever, something that maybe opens that okay. hole into a door. Oh shit! Uh, yeah. Uh, four plus two, a uh, six. You do a thorough look around. You don't see anything resembling mm. a switch a lever something that opens that up and you, even looking at it you don't see no obvious door or cuts in the hole. wall yeah it's just a hole drilled through the stone sure um all right so uh i'll walk what was the guy's name the prince's name again I uh prince gasgar gasgar uh, uh sorry the full name is gasgar von brazen i'll say gasgar do you think you're well enough to to walk if we Try to lead you back out of this place. I can, I can follow along, but I, I can't move fast or quickly. Wait. I need a I, robe. I, I need something to hide me. Do you have a yeah. robe, a cloak? All right. Well, I'll yeah, I'll take off my traveling cloak, which I believe I have. Uh, uh what is it? Are you naked now? No, I have clothes on under, but I think it's a traveling cloak. Where's my can, inventory? Can we check this room if there's any clothes in them? Like, I mean, you don't see any clothes in here. Okay. You haven't opened the coffin, I suppose. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. Well. Uh. Yeah. I don't know if I have a cloak specifically. I have traveler's clothes, social and outer wear. <laughs> um. Uh, but that's a good point. I mean, maybe I go over the coffin. Yeah, this could be a bad idea. No, I just said take off my cloak and say, put this on, my friend. He gladly accepts. He puts the cloak on and pulls the hood over his head so mm, it's difficult good. to see. And he leans okay. up against the wall. Sure, I say. And he, he, has, he is not wearing much. He only has, like, pants that are torn, like, towards the ankle. Mm. But he does have the the belt and the scabbard for his sword, and he sheaths the sword into the scabbard. Okay. And then I'll say, "You've made the right choice." Okay. Fall. Okay. Uh, excuse, um, excuse me, everybody. Excuse me. Before we go up there, Dasper, old friend, I know that honesty is one of your best traits. I would just ask that you let me do the talking when we get upstairs. And if anyone sees any way to clean the shit off of the the prints here, make them a little less odorific, I think that would be good as well. We can look on the uh, on the way on the way up. I think there was something in the other room that might help us. We dumped out a bathtub. Oh, we dumped it? Yeah, we dumped it. We turned it over. 
Damn it! <laughs> Did it drain into anywhere? Let us see. It was just down this hallway. Follow me. And they start walking back down the hallway. Mm-hmm. I follow. Um, and then we look on the like on the so on the ground down here is like is there is there like puddles of water? Can we walk? Can he? Yeah. Walk? So the tub that the, yeah the tub that you, you you've dumped over to the side uh, has like the water spilled all over the ground. However, it did pull up into a corner, and it is it, there is not a lot of it left. It's draining into somewhere. Okay. Um, I say, well, t- take some of this water and wash your face and hands quickly. Gaz, okay. He does Gazmar. so. He moves forward and he, he starts washing his face and hands, and especially his hands so he can grip his sword. Oh, and then he scrubs his face and cheeks. <sighs> Norm- normally, I wouldn't use water in the basement floor of Grinner's Row to clean myself but based on where you've been lately i think it's the better option yes i've got five inches of shit in every orifice and crack in my body you said this was a bubblery that's a very specific amount of shit you said this was a bubblery right yep it is it's it's a bubblery and we've been hired by this large minotaur dude to come and kill the rats down here so uh what do you, then, you know what do you do with your 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 shit in Grinner's row well mostly i don't ask <laughs> well they say okay so i'll say but the water was draining down this drain you said it was draining down the drain mm-hmm. uh um it must go into some pipes or tunnels perhaps should we how big is this grate i look around I don't know. let us investigate perhaps we can find an opening to the Undercity. Got uh, so yes, let us look around. All right. <laughs> so, Investigation roll as you look for the mm, source of where the water is draining. I wish I had better investigation stuff. D20. Uh. Oh, come on. <laughs> Two natural runs on. There we go. <clears throat> so I you, do not see anything. So I mean, you attempt to look around and you don't. You're just like, duh. Like, <laughs> you're, just mm. like, you're like a space is, cadet in the middle of the room. <laughs> It makes uh, sense. I've been in the woods. I'm like, huh. Oh. <laughs> but Gazgar, he moves towards this pile of rock, and he says, underneath this rock, you, uh, flee. Help me push this. Oh, jeez. Gotten bossy all of a sudden. <laughs> I will also, uh, I'll help. Uh, I'll help you. Very well, Tasmer. You help as well. All right. So uh, everyone be- does a heave and begins pushing the rock. Heave. Strength check? What? Yes, strength. Sorry, yes. Uh, athletics check, please. Athletics? Eh. <laughs> like I'm questioning you. I'm like, come on, no, this is strength for sure. Uh, well, it, you do you do add your strength to an athletics roll. Oh, yeah, have. I got 17. Nice. Oh, you got your strong lad. Oh, my. I got six. Wait, wait, athletics? You're not a strong lad. Yeah, plus you have four. plus four. Okay, okay I, I got yeah. 21. My head plus cannon zero. Was wrong. My head cannon was wrong about you. Gasgar would have totally asked you and not tilt him. Uh, I know. <laughs> oops. <laughs> um, so you push the rock. The, the map doesn't animate. It's not fully a video game, so I can't show the sure. rock moving. Yeah, yeah. But you push the rock, and um, you see just like a kind of a dilapidated sort of hole. Like the rock was put here to cover this hole. And a broken like ladder running down, and he says, oh, I, "If my education serves correctly, I think Grinner's Row was established long before any proper sewage and caverns were created. So God only knows what's down there." Hmm. Um. This. Well. This is our only option, I, I believe. Like, we can't be seen in the streets. All right, I can I can see well in this darkness, so perhaps I will. Maybe eventually... I should go up and get paid for the rats and meet you guys outside. Like you go through whatever the shit is downstairs, and I'll find like find <laughs> you later. No, I, so I, can't. I, oh, well, yeah, no, we ahead. can't. We can't do that because they'll come. The Inquisitory will come asking questions of you. Right, right, the inquisitor tree. Okay, looks like we're going down. Uh, Whoever's, yeah, okay. you said 
Uh, you mentioned a minotaur as a proprietor. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's the proprietor or not. I just know that he's working the counter today. So, how do you know? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> found that. Uh, how, how do you know this minotaur is not in on it? Well, I don't really even know what it is. The moment so, you um, ascend those stairs, he'll have his firm hand around your neck and pop it. Hmm. Seemed I, suspicious that he didn't I, clean out his own rats, to be we, honest. We were only looking for the rats. We did not even know we were going to find you, Gas. No, but whoever plotted my death. Look, he stands up and he just he goes towards, there's a door sort of the north. He closes the door quietly, looks around. I'm the fucking prince of this city. One of a few. Do you know how... Do you know the level of shit you're in even being here with me? I know the level of shit you were in a second ago. That's, I tell you what. Uh, that is a, a, a good <laughs> good analogy yeah. for your situation. You uh, are in the actual shit in life. So so I have this epiphany at this moment. This is like I've been trying to find my way to kind of impress my dad and like to to you know, rise up the Tilton family hierarchy. And all of a sudden it, it, you know, comes to me that like, I'm still on the conveyor belt of trying to get a gold from the guy upstairs. And here I might have a prince in front of me that could be my golden ticket to a life on easy street. So I suddenly shift entirely in the way that I'm thinking. And I'm like, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and I turn to Das and I say, Das, you know, I think, we might want to listen and help this prince. <gasps> and then I, I look back at him and said, I'm glad you finally come around. Helping people is the right thing to do. It is. I finally <laughs> see the light. Um, prince Kasgar approaches so you as you, just before you say your thing, he approaches you and he puts his hand on your shoulder and he says, friend, I appreciate your spirit. <laughs> and I appreciate your smell. Let's go. All right, so I think I, I had mentioned I would lead the way down because I can see uh, better in darkness. Mm -hmm. This guy's a human; he doesn't have night vision. That's right. So yeah. okay, so then I it's... all right. So you descend. Uh, you gather. You gather your party and descend down the ladder below. Um, we are going to change maps in uh, in uh... the sub basement already. We're going to change maps into the sub basement here. Uh, let me just go ahead and make sure we're good. I have to. I have a few adjustments to make in Foundry before we get started. Before I bring you guys down. So one, give me a quick second. It's funny um, uh, <clears throat> how many secret exits this one room has. <laughs> like we're like we found makes... what. But in the old days, you know, things were dungeons were built upon dungeons, ruins, things, houses built upon ruins. Who knows what's underneath? It's true. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, uh, so I just have to make sure I got your vision correctly here. You have dark vision, right? I have dark vision. Yeah. So everything showed up is gr like grayed out, but I could, you could, I could see it. Yeah. So I'm just making, we got. Oh, I and make... I have this torch too. I still have the torch lit, right? Because that's why. I got you, oh, light. you do have a torch light source. Okay. Well, is that. Yeah, I don't know. Is that what's going on? I just want to because make... there's lights just following us around, but yeah, I'm just making sure like uh, it's working okay here. Just give me a quick second. Yeah, again, it should be dark vision, I guess. Yeah, light forty twenty, light color. There's that yawn. <laughs> the yawn from uh. From my. I, I only skied eight kilometers today. This is a little yeah. ski. This is little ski. Just like a, yeah. All right, Tilton, you also had a torch that you were working on. Yeah, I think he had a torch. I don't know that I actually had one, but there seems to be one of my character because it's fall the light source is following me. Okay, so I'm just turning on some some stuff here. <laughs> one second. Oh, that's a little too much. Okay. Um. Sorry, Foundry's like kind of fun to screw with, because <laughs> yeah, it seems like a really neat. It has like program. neat like torch stuff and all that. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, okay, I think that's good. It's just somebody's animation I put on way too strong. I'm gonna just get you guys down there in a second. Just fixing this here. 
Okay. It's still kind of nuts, but whatever. Okay, I'm uh, bringing you in. Uh, activate. Renner's Rose Sewer. Oh, cool. You guys see yourselves in the corner there? Great. You may see... No, it's still... Yeah. Took a lo- I'm at 90%. It's going to take a while. To- it took a while because yeah, yeah. I... Okay, there. I see myself. There's like yeah. this nasty stuff. Yeah. yeah, can't really tell. There's a big gray area behind us. Um, so ignore that. That's just a cut off of the map. Like, I can oh. like, make the map so big. So you know, there's some aesthetic concessions yeah, yeah. we got it. We got to do. Fine, fine. Um, so that brings us, uh, I think, to our break, our midway point break. Uh, okay. We're gonna have another like hour, I think, behind this. Yep. For our session, but uh, let's go ahead and take a quick break. Uh, chat room. Uh, we'll be back, or listeners will be back uh, soon. You guys good? I'm just going to go have a quick little puff and you know, yeah, yeah. drink. Yeah. Sounds good. Five minutes? Yeah, five minutes. Okay. All right. Be back. Sounds good. Okay, chat room. We'll see you guys real soon. We'll continue on with uh, what we're doing here in just a second. So thanks so much for hanging out. I'm going to mute. All right. See you guys in a little bit. And let's uh, continue on. All right. And we are back. Hello, everyone. We're back from the break. Where we last left off, Dasmar Elderstag, Tilton Flea Fowler, and Prince Gasgar von Brazen have descended uh, below into the under depths of Grinner's Row. Now, as you descend the ladder, whose rungs are brittle with age, uh, precariously it could snap off at any second, but fortunately does not, um, you look down below and see. A large river of shit, of, <laughs> of feces from the underpourings of the city, going God knows where, probably into the river of the city, no doubt. Um, but yes, uh, it's complete darkness down here. You hear the, the the slight gurgling of the 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 shit river as it flows down. On either side of the cavern, there are ledges that you can safely kind of traversed without having to sit in the liquid thankfully um sort of just a technical question sure ask away <clears throat> well um i guess it doesn't make sense it's going to be like a, a long rest <laughs> it doesn't seem like a good place for it. You can set up camp and sleep down here if you want, at your risk and peril. Uh, who knows? It's probably, you know, you're okay, under city. Well you're not I'll... in some crazy-ass dungeon. Maybe it's fine. Well, yeah, when when we get down there, I just, I'm going to ask, oh, I'll say to um, Gazmar. <laughs> what is his name right? Gazmar? Like Gazgar. Like... Gazgar. Gazgar. Gazgar, my friend. Do you feel fit enough to continue on, or do we need to lie down and repose for a while until you regain some of your strength time is of the essence but I am in a weak state wait I, I would I would welcome some time to collect my thoughts but are we still not in peril we haven't closed perhaps we should close the rock above our heads somehow mm. I don't know if we have the strength to do so that seems a good idea yeah, we're like right under where we just left. It feels like they would find us right away. Also, it smells like shit down here. I don't think that I would be... Uh, bless you. I didn't think that I would be missing that shit-filled room, but it, I think, might have smelled better than down here. Are you guys sure you want to camp? It just occurs to me that we were challenged somewhat by the rats above, and a place such as this might have many more of the same type of creature. Uh, perhaps first we should try to move the stone back in place. Maybe I'll climb up the ladder. Speak for yourself. Those rats didn't challenge me. I just pwned them. All right. Yeah, you climb up the ladder to, to get a look. And, you know, moving the rock from this direction yeah, is that. asking a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, it's not like I won't even try. Happen. I'll shake my head and come back down and say, I think it is unlikely we'll move that rock back. Let's go a little further and then I'll... then we can talk about it. All right, Flea. Let's let's move along. I agree with the Flea's suggestion. Perhaps we can find somewhere defensible and take turns at watch while we recuperate. Mm -hmm. If right. we do indeed need to to rest. 
All right, Dasmer, you lead the way. Okay, so I'll I'll go in front because I have, I guess, better vision. Okay. I'm going to walk down here. These guys follow it along. Because hmm. I'm a cow. Or... All right, as you move forward along the walls of... Uh, Along the walls. I'm just going to pause here. Uh, you can't move anymore when I got the game paused, right? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Well, I'm know. just going to move so that we don't, you know, it's, so that if there's something I need to tell you, then I can tell yeah. you uh, yeah. uh, as we go. So as you move closer down the hallway with both torch and night vision, you see that there's a bridge that uh, traverses both the northern f- facing cave wall versus the southern facing cave wall um the the shit river as it were uh, extends both to the left and to the right um in two different uh passages all right i'm gonna i would like to do i guess i'm gonna call it a perception check i look at the the flow of the sewage water okay. and maybe smell that see if i can sort of smell the air or feel a sense of breeze direction see what i can make of that Okay. So um, it's perception. Is that the right one? You you tell uh, me if it's the right one. If you're using, you can use nature to detect, um, you know, living creatures or identify creatures. If you're trying to figure out, I would use like I'm nature. To out what's what's down? Da- yeah, for airflow. Downstream, or if I can, if I can see if there's fresh air or air is flowing in a, in a direction. Yeah, if, if you're, I, can if, smell I would accept the nature roll for detecting airflow. Okay. Well, uh, or is perception? I mean, I'm better. At Perception's perception, a little more it? visual than it is, but I would take either or, whichever one you want. Okay. Well, and say like, well, let's say because there's some visual stuff. I'm looking at the flow of the sewage too. Um, yeah. Okay. Then let's say perception. You wanted to figure out which perception. way is downwind. Uh, yeah, and which way is downstream as well? Downwind, downstream, um, or where fresh air might be coming from versus stale air. Okay. Let me roll a d20 here. Roll going slow what did i get 12 mm-hmm. plus 5 so 17 okay so in your examination of your surroundings you're able to determine the following uh, the river of feces is flowing from north to south as you're looking at it on the map and then to your character's left which would be right on the map so like up it seems to be flowing from uh the set the southern like the southwest direction okay flowing that way flowing okay yeah. i see the direction you're going. flowing okay uh then perceiving that i um i'll turn back oh also and... in terms of smell there is no fresh air no fresh air <clears throat> i'll say the in my experience <laughs> Uh, liquids flow downstream towards larger bodies of water, and I can only assume that this will eventually lead us to a river. I think that we should follow the flow of the stream uh, in its downward direction. And then I move to continue along. Or, or I, that's what I say to them. I, I'll, I'll take your word for it, Dash. Anything that gets us out of here quicker. Okay, let me unpause, and you can move up to six spaces, please. Up to six. One, two, three, four. Well, four. Mm-hmm. That looks like a rock there. Five, six. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Croft. Uh, Tilton, I... let me know when you're done moving your six spaces. I think that's six. Okay. So um, as you round the corner uh, of the cavern, uh, moving, uh, you continue on basically to your left you know, staying close to the cave wall, walking along the cave path that appears to have been carved out by people sort of intentionally that it may have, you know, I loosely in quotes designed this place as a sewer system. Um, you hear a noise coming from the southern direction, that the direction you did not go. You hear a, uh, just sounds mm. like that, but echoes, it's all echoey and reverbs throughout the wall, just like a, like a little regurgitating sound, and everyone stops, and Gasgar goes, Arkin. <laughs> what do you suppose that could be? I say to him. He shakes his head. Nothing good is the expression on his face. Then I so... propose we continue along our current path, away from the sound. 
I'm good with that. All right. Uh, move six spaces. One, two diagonals are good, eh? Mm-hmm. Three, four, five, six. Cut. Oh. Okay. Cool. And as, as you round the corner, um, a soft green and yellow glowing lights flicker and dance off the northern walls. And as you see around the corner, you see a large wooden bridge again traversing from one side of the cave where the shit river doesn't touch. Um, But then on the left side is more of an expanse of cave floor. And there, glowing mushrooms appear to be uh, just bursting forth um, in in this area. And towards the back, there is a rather large shed. And uh, in this area, uh, when there's I also see, like a yeah. green fog that 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 permeates, as well as like little glowing fireflies that dance around this area. Cool. When I see these things, I exclaim, "Like I, ah, what beauty! I've never seen mushrooms such as these." Oh man, <laughs> I didn't think this could get any worse. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, I'm going to continue on towards these interesting mushrooms. I mean, I I know enough about nature that I'm going to like not just run straight in. I know there's dangerous stuff in nature, but I'm going to okay. approach cautiously. Um, maybe yeah. You know, well, okay. So I, can I go another six spaces? Or yeah. What do you, move another six spaces one, ahead if you two, wish. Three, four, five, six. Okay. So I'm just outside the realm of the um, the mushrooms. And then, uh, I don't know, I want to use a nature check on them to see if I think these are producing poisonous spores or anything of this kind of thing. What a curious mushroom. I'm, I, I wonder what type it is. All right, roll your, roll your nature check, please. Oh, man, it's going to be a friggin' one, I bet. <laughs> 13, all 13, right. Plus, plus your three, modifier. 16, 16. All right, so um, you, you know... A cursory glance at this distance is only going to tell you so much about the mushroom samples you see before you. However, um, they have a glowing property, which is very rare. Mm. And what you can also tell is that this isn't just some uh, cropping of mushrooms. This is a tended uh, garden, uh, a symphony of Mm. mushrooms, if you will. Someone has been encouraging and tending to this this isn't just uh, a random outgrowing um, in terms of identifying their type uh, how knowledge like do you have comprehensive knowledge of mushrooms or do you just kind of uh, taste them and meet know that yeah. some is some are poisonous and i mean uh, having spent a lot of time you, in some are psycho you might uh, need to psychonautic yeah. in nature in order to get them know them better you might need to smell them and taste them and try them and feel them you know the mm-hmm. None immediately jump out to you as familiar samples of, mm, but there's right. there there's there's so many species of mushroom really. So, will you ever well, know them all? No. I would just say know enough to know that you shouldn't just eat random mushrooms that you find, for death may await you. Mm-hmm. Um. So I don't know. I'm going to continue on through the. Um, I mean, can't help but notice the shed. <laughs> so I'm going to continue on through the being that looks like a. Uh, um, a garden here trying try not to stamp stomp on the mushrooms i look back at my friends and say please mind your step these are such delicate wonderful living organisms we should not try to damage them um i, I want... roll my eyes significantly okay okay um i know it's okay so i move ahead over here to where the bridge is and mm-hmm. just kind of look around <coughs> marveling at the mushrooms all right, you, you you walk amongst the mushrooms, and the mushrooms uh, look quite big on the map, but really they don't. None of them come any higher than like your waist level. So that's still a giant that's mushroom. Pretty... Yeah, I know <laughs> it's still giant, but like in fantasy terms, it's not the biggest. Yeah, you yeah. Can see. yeah. You can't, I'm like, just sit and I'm just saying the visual might make them look like yeah, yeah. huge, right? So right. right. Um, so uh, you do notice uh, there is a bonfire burning as you get closer, sort of in the center, just south of you, <laughs> as you move in. Um, to this area that's also providing some illumination in this area. And then um, 
there is uh, mushrooms everywhere now. You try carefully not to knock them. Tilton, are you trying to move through them without touching them? Or I see you move no. your character in there. No? All right. Then um, as you brush up against them, uh, you a, a cloud of dust uh, springs up and you inhale a cloud of the particulate that springs up. Um, ah. You begin to feel oh. like somebody's tickling your armpits and s- start giggling. <laughs> Prince Prince Gadsgar, stop it! Stop it! The prince looks and says, "I recommend we move past this with haste." <laughs> I recommend you stop tickling me. <laughs> I, I, um, I'm still looking around, like mesmerized by these by these these mushrooms, and I say. It may be only once in one's lifetime that we encounter such a marvel of nature. To rush through it would be a, a tragedy. Um, it looks as though someone lives here. There's a bonfire. Perhaps we should see if someone knows more about this. I shout out towards the thing. Hello! All right, you, you yell hello and it echoes all throughout. <laughs> it echoes all throughout the cavern uh, without care, uh, eliminating any stealth. And you hear you hear a bump inside the shed, like a boom, and then a whole crashing of pots and pans or something falling down, and then the scurrying of feet, and you hear, "Who goes there?" Hello, uh, and then Hello? I who goes there? I shall fuck. Hello, I am Dasmar Elderstag. All right, and I have stumbled onto your mushroom <laughs> garden. It is beautiful, I say. All right, and, and sort of the door creaks slowly open, and wild golden eyes look at you from beyond it, and like f- um, sort of dirty, like flecky skin that's gray that you can see from the door crack, and it says, "Did, did Arthur send you?" I look at him and say, "No." Then. From which realms are you from? Do you do you mean I'm I'm trying to talk between laughing, laugh bits, and I'm like, do you mean Archie? Are you Archie Shroom Dealer? <laughs> and I start laughing again. I don't know an Archie. I see that you've met some of my fine specimens there. I I'm gonna I. What what are the nature of these mushrooms? I must know what species they are and what their properties are. It's guy, am I right? <laughs> All right, and with your with your affable like conversation, he steps out. Uh, again, he's just someone who wears pants and has no other clothes. He's got <laughs> a gray like, like just like overgrown gray hair. He looks like he's been, you know, down here for ages. And has not seen sunlight. Is a man. He's hunched over. He and he comes out with his long hair and his big gray beard. And he says, "Yes, these are all my friends. Friends, provide a welcome to Dasmar Elderstag. You said your name, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. To Dasmar Elderstag and his entourage. Give him a warm welcome. The mushrooms just don't." respond in any way but he seems to look at them like they're people and it's mm. glowing gold eyes <laughs> <laughs> this guy is a loony <laughs> um may i ask your name friend i am pelvinar pelvinar lord yeah. of this here mushroom kingdom ah mushroom kingdom i have encountered many mushrooms in the wilds um, and but I've never seen these types. Are they of poisonous nature? He sort of looks at, almost like in a sort of a nerdy about to correct you way. Poison is a matter of perspective. Mm, I shake my head kind of knowingly and I say, yes, yes, that is very true. Some mushrooms I have encountered. May- <laughs> Provide you with an altered sense of what reality really is. Yes. I'm laughing, but I'm also annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, many close-minded who are shunned from the Mushroom Kingdom think of such things as, as death as something to be avoided. 
But we here know that it is a hastening to the new gates of a new realm of existence. Mm. We are but vehicles to help these fine beings, my subjects, to reach the realms beyond realms. Can we have this conversation later? I am really <laughs> could use the cure. Do you have a cure to these mushrooms? <laughs> my dear friend, Asmar, my temperament as king of the mushroom kingdom <laughs> is a patient one. However, I must admit your squire is annoying me. <laughs> Can you silence him, please? <laughs> It seems that he has inhaled some of the spores from some of your mushrooms, and they have evoked this uh, tendency to laugh in him. Well, kindly ask him to refrain from assaulting my subjects, p mm. perhaps across the bridge. Um, the, I'll say, so then am I, am I to say that these mushrooms are not perhaps for picking? A few samples would, would not be tolerated? Oh, you speak of trade. The existence of my subjects is not one like uh, you and I have come to know, where we celebrate our autonomy and anger should someone take such from us. The real realm beyond realms will embrace the true nature of their form and all will swim in a cloud of pleasure. So, yes, for acceptable offering, you may obtain some of my subjects for your own personal uh, mortal use. Let's so, see. What do I have? At, I've at got this 10 point, gold. <laughs> while you guys are talking here, I'm starting to freak out because I have, again, inhaled a poison from a mushroom that's made me laugh uncontrollably. And my brain has convinced me that the only way to cure the mushroom is to uh, breathe in some other mushroom fumes. <laughs> so I'm, I'm starting to frantically step on mushrooms around me to try to, 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 try uh, to create. Right. You stumble through um, the mushrooms and smell another mushroom. You have a choice between two other mushrooms than the one that you've inhaled. Okay. There is one. Yeah. That is um, sort of very brown and dense, like almost like a chocolate look to it. And there is one that is sort of red and looks like, has like an interesting swirl of colors upon it. And it glows somewhat. Okay. Because I don't know, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to roll a, a D4 and one and two is the brown mushroom and three and four is the... Uh, colorful mushroom. Here we go. Uh, what the heck? One. So what did I say? Brown mushroom. Mm -hmm. So 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 I I step on the brown mushroom in hopes that it's going to create some sort of like gas that I can breathe. Uh, new particulate fills the air that you breathe in intentionally, <coughs> um, and uh, well, it reminds you that you're quite hungry, and you think of all the baked goods that you could be eating. And find yourself oddly desirous to eat the brown mushroom. All right. Uh, <laughs> like there's you're, other you're, brown mushrooms. You're no longer ticklish anymore. There's other brown mushrooms around. They're plentiful brown mushrooms. Okay. But I'm not ticklish. Like the tickling is cured. Yes. The tickling's cured okay. for now. I'm like, oh, thank goodness. Oh. I feel better. Is anybody else hungry? Oh, man, those brown mushrooms, they look good. Please, How much for some of those? Please control your squire while the lords discuss trade. <laughs> I, tur I turn to Flea and I say, Flea, um, I need to get some of these mushrooms as a sample. Please try not to destroy any more of them. <laughs> then I, I turn back to um, Pelvinar and, and then I say, I say, I will offer you... <coughs> Um, three gold pieces. One gold piece for three of the brown mushrooms, one gold piece for three of the colorful swirling mushrooms, and one gold piece for three of the laughing mushrooms. Hmm. Do you accept my offer? Hmm. 
I regret to inform you that we have no use for gold in the Mushroom Kingdom. Hmm. Do you have something else for trade? Perhaps some journeys of your own? Do you have your own subjects? Subjects? Oh yeah, I have a dried mushrooms. Um, I just would point point out that the only other Mushroom Kingdom I've ever played in has lots of gold coins everywhere, but whatever. Mm -hmm. um, this guy doesn't like... <laughs> doesn't like gold coins um can, okay can i well, can i can i while he's trading try to steal a mushroom yes from, uh from, so from you, the ground you, you need to make yeah, a, from the ground we need a sleight of hand check so you, you don't want okay. him to see you take a mushroom that's right which mushroom well, are, you, are you going for a brown a brown mushroom yeah, brown mushroom a green mushroom eaten. or a red mushroom no the one that wants to be eaten the brown one okay brown mushroom yeah, so here we go. So uh, this is slight sleight of hand. I'm trying to steal a brown mushroom. <laughs> Seven plus five, twelve. Okay. Um, let me roll. Okay. You successfully pluck a brown chocolatey mushroom from the ground, and uh, Pelvinar seems fixed with uh, Dasmer, so you know he didn't see you. <laughs> Um, okay, so I have uh, now we had talked about I had these dried mushrooms, but I don't know if I put my inventory like I didn't write in how many I had. Yeah, well, we don't have to get into specifics. It's not that much of a simulation. Okay. So you but, you have a bag of mushrooms in your bag? Yeah, we'll say dried mushrooms, and um, so then I I pull out this sack that has a, a couple of these dried mushrooms in it, and I look at them, kind of. And look back at him and look at the mushrooms around. And then I hold up the bag and I say, These are samples of the Angandri Philosi. Consumption of this mushroom will open your mind to other realms. I will trade you one of these for the samples I have requested. Because these are very rare and may alter Ooh. the course of your life if you have one. They're very like they're almost like a mystical thing to me, a magic. So I don't want to give up too many of them. King Pelvinar is humbled by your generous offer. Too good is this subject for the my mere serfs. Allow me to trade something more royal and befitting such a subject with one of my own revered subjects. Hmm. Now, interested. what you've seen here um, before you, for the most part, is bagelwort, which is tasty, and fentacle, which makes you have some laughter. And the red one is the elf fart, as it's known. Yeah. But here in my pouch, and he opens up his pouch, and he's like, I have throat grip and jismataz. <laughs> As the throat grip the throat grip hastens the journey beyond the doors to any living creature <laughs> that ingests it I killed Crofton <laughs> he's laughing so hard right now and the Gismataz well <laughs> if you wish to take a journey to worlds you have yet to see Gismataz <laughs> is the subject for you <laughs> Oh. I nod in I'm definitely interested. This is a most fitting trade. Uh, what shall uh, it be? Throat grip or jismataz? Unless you wish to trade more than one subject, I would happily take two of what did you call your subjects? Angandri Felosi. Ah, I'd take two of your Angandri Felosis. For, For two one of my for one of, each of a throat grip and a jismataz. I will trade you um, two, <laughs> I, I two of my Angandri Filosi for one of each of your mushrooms, but I would also like samples of your more common mushrooms as well. I turn to Prince Gasgar and say, I bet you didn't think your escape plan was going to involve mushroom stop shopping. Bar bartering. His, his energy level is, is so, he's like, he's dwindling and leaning. He's almost like drunk level at this point. And he just, you just get a uh, from him. 
hey, have this mushroom. Um, so for the trade, um, he says, allow me to meet with my counsel just a moment, please. And he turns around and he leans towards the mushrooms and he goes, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. And he's consulting with the mushrooms. Uh, Ash, do you... I don't think this guy's operating with a full deck. <laughs> and he, can, he, he listens to the mushrooms that he turns to you and he says, Dasma, you have struck a bargain. Let us trade subjects and enrich both of our kingdoms. Very good. I look forward and... to the cross-pollination of your mushrooms with the breeds of my own. All right, so then I feel like I need to update my. All right, so where do you where do you write are, in actual stuff? Yeah. Yeah, so they're on your character sheet. If you go to um, notes, notes, that's kind of a great place to to type okay. in your stuff. You may want to get a Word document open or a Google doc if you just want to write stuff. Sure. That's the, these that's things right I'm about to give you don't exist in any official rule set. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm gonna fire it off. I think in Discord might be the easiest way. You can just copy paste it. Um, sure. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Tasty and brown. So okay, you, you get you get a bagel wart, uh, which is a tasty and brown mushroom you can eat, just delicious. Uh, Fen tickle, it's green, gives you ticklish feelings that make you laugh for ten minutes. You have an elf fart, which is red and stinky when broken open. Um, and then <laughs> you've got from the secret stash, you got a throat grip, which just causes someone's throat to collapse and kills them. Okay. And then you have a jismatez, which uh, is a hallucinogen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, and we'll say, because we didn't really just, but th like, I feel like this is part of my character's backstory that he had this experience with the en Engandri Filosi. We'll say mm -hmm. I had five of those dried Engandri Filosi, and just so that, like, I guess. I'm just going to say you have a pouch of them. We don't have to. Pouch you know, we that. don't have to get. Okay, that's fine. Okay, you you that's got kind of this, that, this fun pouch. I want to have a few of them, but I don't want to be without it. So I give, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, you've got plenty of stash left for sure. Okay. Um, and that, and, I, and I just make sure like, to note that down somewhere too that you have a pouch because I might forget you have stuff sure. like that so it's good yeah, to yeah, know yeah. okay and they're how you communicate with I know not all has been revealed but they're your doorway to another being basically right so oh, yeah. um, um, okay so you, I, you called I it shake the all being right the all mind the door to the all mind mm -hmm. mm. all right the Pelvinar looks very happy and he sort of takes the the, the sorry say the name again the end and the Angandri Angand I gotta remember that. I gotta do some measure. I'll send you Angandri Philosi. He takes them and he, he like tucks them in amongst the mushrooms of his kingdom and looks on them with pride and is sort of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like you don't hear any voices, he's not saying anything, but his head motions as if though he's in conversation with his kingdom. Okay. Okay. And I'll just say to him, I'm like, if you are able to grow um a bloom of these mushrooms, um I will just warn you not to consume too many at one time. <laughs> That's it. And okay. Sorry. And, uh, now, the, now the, I, I step. The king does what his subjects bid. <laughs> the moniker of king is but a farce. I lead, <laughs> but they lead me. I step in and I say, uh, "I just I'm Dasmer's noble squire here. I just wanted to check in on something." Um. I see you're kind of done your little mushroom business. Uh, I'm just wondering, do you know the most expedient way to the surface from here? The surface. Ooh. He looks around at all the mushrooms. Ooh. The squire asks about the surface. It's me. What shall we tell him? Long ago, uh, I came from the surface before I became ruler of the Mushroom Kingdom. And the way is fraught with perils and danger. First, there is the great Arthur. He is a hunter of renowned skill, and he makes it difficult for us to exist peacefully. We war constantly with Arthur. And finally, should you pass Arthur down the river of shit, you will find he whose name shall not be spoken. And only if you vanquish him will you find your way 
to a surface? If it even still exists anymore? So, there's not just, like, some easy way up left or, like, a ladder somewhere? No? Up? We gotta... Up is just another way down. Okay. Well, great chat. Um, da um, Dasper. I'm gonna... Well, I, and I say... Uh, what's his name? <laughs> Sorry, I closed my window here. To write down all my mushroom notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pelvinar... Do you think this would be a it would be acceptable for us to make camp here for a time so that we may rest and recover some of our strength? Oh, it's delightful. We have not had guests in some time. Um, one moment, and Great. He, he looks towards the mushrooms in his kingdom. He seems to be taking petitions from all concerned nobility, <laughs> and then he turns and says. The Mushroom Kingdom would be delighted to entertain such esteemed guests as Dasmar Elderstag and his charge. <laughs> I bow to him. I bow to him and I say, thank you for accepting us. Uh, what has then, happened to my life? And then I say, Prince Gasgar, <laughs> I believe we're going to rest here for some time so that we may recover our strength. Flea, I think we need to rest. Uh, you know what? And I could that not sounds... think of a more beautiful place to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you tried the red, red ones? <laughs> All right, I'm so are you going to set up camp down here? Long rest. Yeah, All right, well, rest. hang on. It's not that simple. Well, we well, got... okay, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's move your guys into like a safer area. Uh, Prince Gasgar <laughs> just moves in. As he gets closer, he just collapses on the ground. His body He's racked tired. with sickness. He just collapses on the ground, and Pelvinar takes notice and says, That your subject, Dasmar, is ill. I have remedies. I'm like, oh, those would be most appreciated. Yes, yes, yes. And he starts stepping through the, the, the different little mushroom uh, places, picking little subjects and putting them into a bowl, and he gets a... a, a, a I don't remember which one's the mortar and the pestle, but I think the pestle's the breaking one. You know, he has like a little mortar pestle, like made of wood he starts he spits in it to make like liquid in it and then he <laughs> grinds up it into like the mushroom into like a paste and he okay. he offers it to you he says please place this in your subject's mouth make sure he swallows okay i take it and put it in prince gasgar's mouth all right you take it and you drink feed it. I eat this prince gasmo uh, he's a, you he's, he's unconscious okay from, he's out from oh, yeah. so you know you, you, it's sort of the paste sort of sticks in his mouth you're gonna need to like pour something in i think to help him to drink it mm, uh do i have a water skin do i feel like i feel like is that included in your kind of like traveling stuff water skin. yeah and your rations yeah and your Rations, okay. Yeah, so I kind of take my water skin and... Oh, yeah, I do have a water skin, okay. And then I pour some of the water in his mouth. Help him wash it down. Help him to wash it down. And as soon as you start doing that, he begins, like, trembling a little bit and sweating profusely. And, the, and then I look at Flea and I say, good, good. Mm. He's working out the poison. Okay. And as for yourselves... I'll take your word for it, buddy. <laughs> as for yourselves, when you're setting up camp, like a long rest is eight hours of uninterrupted sleep, meaning if you get attacked or ambushed, that interrupts it, you don't get it. Okay. So generally, you have to like keep a watch sometimes, which means your rest is going to be more in the 12-hour range to ensure hours. people or depending on how many party members you have. You only kind of have two because Prince Gasgar is not going to be doing watch. You also have Pelvinar, who you can ask to, to keep yeah. watch over. Or you could just chance it and not do any watch to get the eight hours. But it's not as easy as just resting. we got to figure out what your your tactics are in a, in a cave. Um, well, I've, I turned to Pelvinar and I say, Pelvinar, we're we are quite tired um, from battling rats and, and helping our charge Prince Gasgar along. Um, if we were to sleep, would you be awake to watch over us? Or should we set a watch and take turns between Flea and I? Now that you've spoken of this Arthur. Pelvinar looks and he says, Rest assured, my royal guard protects this kingdom. Arthur and he who shall not be named have no purchase in this kingdom. Arthur as, and Voldemort. <laughs> as, as well as um, 
in the Mushroom Kingdom. Now, old Benjamin, he may pay a visit, but mm. I have... We have a long-standing feud, and don't trouble yourselves. As my guests, you will be safe amongst mm. my in, in, within the walls of my kingdom. All right. Well, that's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tilton. So, I... <laughs> so let me get this straight. You're, you're, you're comfortable with his mushrooms watching us while we sleep? Is that, is that it? Because, well, uh, no offense, they don't seem like the best guards. I unroll my bedroll and lie down, and I say, well, by all means, Flea, if you would like to stay up, uh, have the first watch, you could wake me in, in a number of hours, and I'll switch with you, if it would make you more comfortable. Ugh. I'm really tired. <laughs> um, uh, whatever, let's trust the mushroom guy. I'll I'll uh, have a I'll have a stews with you, so we 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 embark upon a long rest, trusting uh, the mushroom dude to protect us. Okay, all right. All right. I'm not gonna so, click the long rest button yep, until click, you tell us. Go ahead and click the long rest button. I'm gonna make a roll though. Okay. So, like for me, it does nothing because I don't have anything. But it's also like, yeah, I, I burned my two spell slots, so. Right. Okay. Because it's our only it's our only heals, right? Mm -hmm. So it says, confirm one, two, three, take long rest. <laughs> Should I? Did you click yeah, it? Yeah, 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 you click it. It'll just put your health. But it just to me, it unblocked my spell slots. Whatever. I, guess I, I thought I was in. waiting for for Bo to tell us if we were successful or not. Ah, I'm sure he's going to tell us we're going to get murdered by some. No. Nope. So you successfully uh, have Ooh. your long rest and you after the period of, of you, you guys get a full eight hours um, Dazmar you find the rest. It's This is like Club Med. This is a great place to rest. You slept yeah. peacefully soundly and were not interrupted. Um, Tilton you did benefit from a long rest but this place reeks of shit. Um, there's shit water everywhere. There's mushrooms all mm -hmm. over the place. You were definitely woke yourself up giggling a couple of times in the middle of the night. And it, whenever you looked over for respite, it was either Dazmir with a smile on his face or Prince Gasgar von Brazen sweating and looking like death itself, uh, providing no reassurance. And you heard the muttering of Pelvinar as he walked among the mushrooms going like, Ooh, babe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Sounds great. Apart from that. <laughs> this crazy dude talking to Apart me. from that, it was a wonderful rest. And um, right. with that, I think we're not going to, because we're at time. We're at 7 p.m. Yeah, now. It's we're probably at time. a good time. It, there's no real time to embark on any new uh, phase of uh, God damn the cave. it. So I had to sit through like <laughs> mushroom talk for like the last half hour. And I'm like, that's just, just look, we're trying we're trying not to be murder hobos in this go through. That's D and D, &D baby. Then maybe we we'll, maybe we won't wait a month or five weeks for the next one. Maybe we'll play in two weeks if you guys are yeah, up for yeah. it. You know, yeah, yeah. we can get it together yeah. again quicker and see. Uh, you know, there's a new there's a new intrigue in episode zero. All you were doing was going to kill like some rats, and now you have the prince of fucking Red Skull, one of the princes. We got uh, the prince. Uh, well, claiming then we to be went the mushroom prince. shopping um, with him. Yeah, and well, you, you know, it's it's not just you about your character; these, it's yeah. about other characters like having and, interesting things. And you might uh, want to get your hands on there that. There just throat, happened throat to be a throat. mushroom vendor down there. Like it wasn't planned. Red Skull is a city that exists on its own. You know, like it's just, right, what, it's so. just how it happened. Uh, Don't worry. Maybe you. he who shall not be named will be an interesting thing. Well, this you... whole like, yeah, this map looks super cool. Just looking around, I'm like, whoa, what are some things to yeah, explore it's, around. Uh, it's fun that it gets to animate and have pretty cool vibes. Oh, it and looks stuff, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, super cool. And the light, I like the I like the way they do lighting on these VTTs where it won't like I can see the whole map, but you guys can't. You, you're only limited. Yeah, to... yeah, yeah. No, awesome. it just it does yeah. look cool. Like so that. it's just pretty <laughs> no, fun. I mean. Yep. Yeah, this is great. We got right. we have a prince we're escorting. It's a good time. All right, so I'm gonna do the goodbyes mm -hmm. and play a bit of music, and then uh, we'll call it good. So if we can just do the outro real quick. Uh, chat room, thank you very much for watching. If you're watching on, uh, we stream it live on Twitch. 
Um, usually it's going to be Sundays around 4 p.m. monthly. That's the sort of plan, but you never know when one might pop up, so follow me there. Also on YouTube, Bo Schwartz is where we're hosting the videos. If you're watching the VOD, thank you. If you're tuned in live, thank you. Um, I will be putting up an audio feed soon, maybe even tomorrow or within this week, so that audio listeners who want to enjoy it while they're at work are doing that thing. So details on that to come. And, uh, yeah, follow on Twitter if you, you know, or x.com, whatever, if you want to be notified when it goes live. Um, that's about it. So any final words, any goodbyes for our listeners, Mike or Crofton, before we let them go? Looking forward to the next time. It was fun. All right. Yeah, it was a great time. It was hilarious. A lot of laughs. Yeah, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. I'm going to bring up the music and say goodbye, and we'll see you on episode two real soon. Okay. Ciao.